James Morton, and today we're going to play a beat that uh, one of my fav favorite drummers uh, used a lot over his career. I'm talking about Steve Gadd, great role model because he was very talented and musical. He could step into any situation and make it happen, which is why he was a, a role model for me. This is one of his beats. He kind of pioneered, or helped pioneer, the idea of playing two ride surfaces simultaneously. And this is one of his patterns. Uh, like a lot of things, uh, some things seem complicated until you break them down into steps. And that's what I hope to do for you now. If you look at the little example, you have straight sixteenths. This, is, this, this will get you started. This is step one. If you play straight sixteenths, right hand lead on the snare drum against quarter note bass drum, and you take out the sixteenth note on one and three, you get this. So you're pulling out the hand that would have been there. One E and F, two E and F, three E, four E and F, one E and F, two E and F, three E and F, four E and F, one E and F, two E and F, four E and F, one E and F, two E and F, three E and F, four E and F, one E and F. If you have that mastered, you can go on to step two, which is doing exactly the same rhythm. You're just of voicing them on different services. Your left hand goes on the hi-hat, your right hand goes on the cymbal cup, and it also comes to the snare on two and four. Okay? So here's step two, exactly the same rhythm. One, Step three, we're just adding our left foot to join the bass drum in simultaneous in sync quarter notes. Your feet are doing one E and a two E and a three E and a. Now, if you think about what your left hand's doing, it's playing offbeat sixteenths. One E and a two E. You have to bring you have to raise your hi hat symbol in order to close it. So you're gonna be catching the last sixteenth of every beat open by default. Uh, it's gonna left limbs would be doing this. One E and two E and three E and four E and So we're just by adding by just coming down on the beat with your left foot, joining your right foot, you're gonna be catching the last sixteenth open. So now here's what we've got so far. alone is sufficient for a lot of uh, great circumstances. Uh, you know when a beat, when a, a group is jamming and you want to sound interactive and yet very pulse orientated, it's a great beat to use. Any tempo. You can crank it up if you want. Take it more moderate. Okay, so that's that's kind of like the finished beat, and we did that in three steps. Now I've got one more step for, for you if you want to add a little funk element to the same beat. All right, uh, this sometimes throws a monkey wrench in people's coordination, and I hope it doesn't do that to you. We're going to do exactly what we're doing. Our left hand is going to come off the hi-hat and pop the snare on the E of 3, the second sixteenth. So your left hand is doing this. One and a two and a three and a four and a. You add that to the mix, what we're doing. So here is the funky five beat. challenge, just go, to, go back to your basic beat, play that for a while, and try to sneak that left hand uh, snare note 
in when you can. Uh, good luck. Oh, I feel good. I knew that I would not. I feel good. I knew that I would not. 